Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to do question 66 and then 67 and 68 of section 3 of the pink booklet. So question 66 is about DNA, and we're told about this thing called PNA. Um, the difference in structure is described. Um, so we're told that DNA has this negatively charged phosphodiester backbone, and we're told that PNA has this repeating to amino ethyl glycine backbone um, and we're, we're told that these are these are both sort of forms of uh, genetic material but then we're asked in question 66 um, what's the effect of the structure on its solubility so we're given two really complicated diagrams but we can simplify it and so if we draw this as being DNA and this as being PNA what do we know about how it might interact with water? So first thing with water, and we're, we're always going to have to think about this when it comes to solubility, is that water is polar, as I'm sure you know. And so it has this positive end and this negative end. So it's going to be more positively charged at the hydrogen end and more negatively charged at the oxygen end. So why does that matter? We're told that DNA has a negative charge overall, whereas PNA is neutral. This negative charge here is going to be complementary to the positive charge on the water molecule, and that means that it will be more likely to dissolve in water. Whereas PNA is unable to form those um, charge-based bonds, and these sort of bi dipolar bonds, and it's uh, therefore going to be less soluble in water. So 66, the answer is going to be C. Question 67, 68 then is about birds flying. So there's a pretty complicated graph here, and it's much clearer on the paper than I would be able to copy out here. So make sure you have a copy of it beside you, but I can talk you through it. So we're told that there's these four different variables described on this one graph. So we've got speed, we've got time, we've got the angle of bank, and we've got the radius of the circular path. So basically we've got birds flying around in a circle, and that circle has a radius, which is defined here. And we're told also the speed and time, and that makes sense. Um, but angle of bank, um, we're, that's really the angle between the joining tips of the outstretched wings of the bird and the horizontal plane. So it's really the angle at which the bird is flying. Um, right. So there is a sentence that describes how to read this graph. And it says, for example, as shown in the figure, if the speed is, and it, and it continues there. So make sure you've gone through that and see if you can um, get the values that they're getting on at there, uh, just to make it clearer. Question 67 says, a bird of mass two kilograms is soaring in a circular path. The speed of the bird is 12 meters per second and the angle of bank is 25. So I think we'll stop there and just try and find where that is on the graph. Um, so the two kilogram bit doesn't actually really matter. Um, we're told the speed of the bird is 12 meters per second. So imagine this is gonna be the x-axis, sorry, the y-axis. And go 12 meters per second, find that line and then go across um, until you hit the 25 degree angle of bank. And you can see that then that corresponds to a time for a full circle of between 17 and 18 seconds. Okay, so now we've sort of found that point on the graph. We're told that the bird halves the radius of its circular path. So first of all, let's work out what the radius was uh, in the first place. So getting back to that point, um, we can follow the curved line. So there's a curved line like this, and these lines uh, talk about the radius, the radii of the circular paths. So if you follow this line back up, it goes to 32 meters. And so a half of the radius is going to be 16. So let's go back to these curved lines. Sorry, it's not very clear. These sort of curved lines, and let's find the one that says 16 meters. And then we're told, um, well, well, first of all, let's find the 
point there for that radius and that speed. And we're told that it increases the angle of blank by 10 degrees. So that goes up to 35 degrees then. And we're asked what is the best estimate of the bird's speed in its new path. So we're looking at the intersection of the lines of radius of 16 and an angle of bank of 35. So these two lines intersect at some point and then you just read across the y-axis until you hit um, 10 meters per second. And that's going to be our answer. So that's answer D for question 67. If we look at 68 now, it says a bird of mass 2.5 kilograms is soaring in a circular path with a radius of 10 meters. The magnitude of the centripetal force acting on it is equal to the magnitude of its weight. And then we're given an equation for centripetal force. So this one's a little bit more involved, um, but there's really just one extra step. So we've been given this equation, which is force, centripetal force, equals mass times the velocity squared over the radius. So what do we know? We know that the mass is 2.5 kilograms, and the radius is 10, and we know the force is going to be equal in magnitude to the weight. So the weight is going to be mass times gravity, or 25. So plugging these values into the equation, we get 25 equals 2.5 v squared over 10. So what we can do is 250 over 2.5 equals v squared. v squared is 100, and therefore v is 10 meters per second. So what does that tell us? Well, if we go up to the, the graph, knowing that the radius is 10, and the velocity is 10 as well, we can work out the bank. So let's, first of all, and imagine again, this is the graph, we've got these curved lines that describe the radius. So let's find that one that says 10. And then we're going to have a look at what point on the y-axis it says 10 meters per second and see where they intersect. So that they intersect at a point where there is a line describing the bank like this, and that is the 45 degree line. And so the answer for this question is going to be 45 degrees, or answer D. So a couple of tricky ones, but that was question 66 to 66.